Hello, and thank you very much for clicking on my presentation about an aspect of disk formation and disk evolution that is crucial and that has been, at least in my, at least in my opinion, been underweighted so far, namely info. Before I start, let me briefly point you to the lower right of the slides where you can find a QR code. The QR code will appear on all of the slides, and uh, if you go to the QR code, you will find um, a, we will bring you to a folder where you get a lot of some elementary material such as videos as well as a draft of a submitted paper. So let's talk about the star of the conference, HL Tau, to bring everyone into, put everything into context. Six years ago, this image of dust rings really thrilled the world. And um, people have been wondering a lot about it. What is the origin of these rings? What's causing them? And uh, still, there's a lot of research going on. What does it have to do with planet formation and so on? However, there's one aspect that, um, in my opinion, at least, people have been not so interested about and is somewhat overlooked. And that's simply because it doesn't appear in the, the dust continuum. That's namely the possibility of these uh, streamers. So these streamers. Um, observed from the same source here as for HHL, but um, in gas using HCO plus. And um, this can potentially lead to um, a feeding or replenishment of the, of the reservoir in the disk, as well as it can potentially lead to some structure. So let me make a somewhat provocative statement here. In six years from now, I think we will talk a lot more about these streamers because they mark a crucial link. And they mark a crucial link to the Birth environment to the star forming region, um, as shown here in the press release of the HL of the HL Tau uh, image, where you see the image of HL Tau and you see the star forming region and the image of the star forming region around it. And um, why does it matter? Well, it matters because stars form in different uh, different locations of the star forming region, and that has a consequence on the accretion profiles. Namely, accretion is heterogeneous. And um, observational indication for this heterogeneity is that you see luminosity bursts. So, even for stars that are relatively old, like that should have, according to classical models, should have low luminosities, they actually have quite significant luminosities. And these luminosities, luminosities can be explained by events where there's enhanced accretion. You can see this here in the, this plot from um, our 2017 paper, where you see the um, evolution of sink mass, which is a proxy of the stellar mass based on a large scale magneto-hydrodynamical model of the giant molecular cloud, where you see the, disk the, the stellar masses of uh, objects that after about a million year have similar stellar masses, and yet they have very different accretion profiles. In some cases, they accrete most of their mass or basically all of their mass within just 100,000 years, while in other cases, you can actually see the possibility of significant um, accretion and infall at a later stage. And um, we've been wondering about the possibility of these late infall events or more about the, the physics, what's, what's, what's happening in such a late infall event. And um, Kay still want in, Heidelberg, he has been, um, he was very curious about these events as well, but um, his motivation and was more like that he was thinking about observations of some Herbig stars, namely of HD 105 or 6 or AB or weaker, where you see such an envelope tail-like structure, even though the stars are already a few million years old. And um, carrying out some hydrodynamical models, we showed that yes, indeed, you can actually form these models through late infall, through an encounter of an existing star with gas in the interstellar medium. So you have the star encountering the gas, and that leads you due to conservation of angular momentum it's you with, uh, with um, such, a, such structures. Moreover, we found that, in fact, this can also lead to the formation of uh, even a second generation disk. And, um, that's very interesting, also maybe potentially in another con context, I mean, the context of such systems where you have shadows and these shadows are caused by an inner disk that casts a shadow on the outer disk. So the question for us was, 
Well, there have been some uh, models of um, how to cause these misalignment based on the, on the existing disk. But what happens if you just have late info that forms a second generation disk, the one over the existing star with the disk? Is this maybe possible? And um, we, we uh, tested this scenario with um, the Arepo code. So where we take a blob of gas, as you see in the video, that let it fall onto a star disk system that is you barely see this is at the center. The uh, models, we assumed isothermal gas, we varied the inclination angle, and we varied the rotation. So we consider probe weight and retrograde info. And um, here you can quickly see the, the parameters. If you're interested, please pause the video here um, to read them more carefully. On this slide, you can see the, the time sequence of uh, such an infall event for zero inclination in the case of retrograde infall. The upper panels show the larger scale, the lower panels show the zoom ins. And uh, from the left to from left to right, it's the time evolution. What you can see is you see the formation of the outer disk. And um, if you go to the smaller scales, what you find is that the inner disks um, interacts with the counter rotating outer disk and becomes smaller. So there is interaction between inner and outer disk. And as a consequence of angular momentum conservation, you start shrinking the inner disk. This becomes yet more clear if you compare to the prograde to prograde info where you don't see this where you don't see this shrinking. So um, in summary, we find in our paper in our in our study that retrograde info causes counter rotation of inner and outer disk. It can lead to a larger and deeper gaps between the disks, which is possibly also interesting in context of some transition disks. It leads to the shrinking of an inner disk as well as retrograde info causes enhanced accretion onto the central star. What, uh, what about, but what about the more, maybe possibly more interesting, more exciting cases of um, non-zero inclination? Yes, and um, of course, that's more, much more exciting to us as well. So you can see this video here, where you have the info with an inclination of 60 degrees and um, well, not surprisingly, what you see is you have the inner disk and you form this form this outer disk around it. And um, interestingly enough, when you post-process this data, what you can see is you see that the inner disk can in fact cast a shadow on the outer disk. So you are expected to, um, to possibly observe this. But um, what about the um, what about the observability? How can we distinguish it from um, from other origins of misalignment? And I think in this context, uh, the eccentricity might actually help. So what we find in our model is that um, you have mild eccentricities in the already existing inner disk, while the outer disk that is newly forming through the capture event shows much larger eccentricities. And um, this might be possibly measurable in if you look at CO channel maps. So this can be potentially be a, a test of um, the origin of info uh, of uh, mis for misaligned disks, whether the disk is uh, whether the cause of misalignment is to is due to info or whether it is maybe it's another cause. And um, I think this is also important to be open minded here. So that's why I put let me put a disclaimer disclaimer here. Namely, we are not saying that all shadows are due to misaligned info. In fact, there have been um, cases, there have been recent papers that uh, nicely explain individual systems with um, an interaction of inner or outer and or outer companion. But um, altogether, I think it is really, also really important that we stay open-minded in the sense and keep consider, think outside the disk as um, we have more and more evidence, more and more observations of um, infall events, namely through streamers. And um, there are these papers when you look just at different different traces, especially if you look at the gas, you can see these larger extended structures that clearly hint at um, at the feeding of the of the forming star disk system. And um, I think this aspect is is really interesting and. Um, should be really more considered 
process, even if it's not at such late infall as discussed before, but uh, also in the context of the earlier phases, especially since we have, um, since we are moving towards picture where we uh, think that planets start forming much earlier than we used to think of. And um, in this context, I think it's very important and very, um, a very nice tool to, to account for this, to account for the larger scale environment by carrying out so-called zoom-in simulations. And that's something I've been um, doing for, uh, for a while already. And I don't want to go into detail here, but let me just briefly emphasize the, the, the concept, namely that you run a large scale simulation of a giant molecular cloud, and then you um, apply a technique so-called adaptive mesh refinement to resolve the formation process of the star the center with more detail. And this way you can actually account for the um, protostellar environment while still, while at the same time also resolving the individual processes, processes on the smaller scales. Concretely, this can also be used then to get information about the uh, formation of, of protostellar multiples as we did in a recent paper and the role of magnetic fields as well as ultimately, you really want to go all the way down to the smaller scales to see how the or to see the processes of the young forming uh, young forming disk in the context of the protostellar environment within form. And um, with that, I'm very much running out of time here, and I want to leave you here with my takeaway points that retrograde infall can cause counter rotating disks, that infall induce misaligned systems. And um, one of the, with, leave you with an outlook that zoom in simulations, I think, are really a key factor to, uh, for our understanding to move forward, forward. Thank you very much for your attention.